Okay. Is this? It's a Thai person doing it, so I guess it's okay to touch it. And then if it's like full and you cut it, it's pretty hard, no? <laughs> It's hard. <laughs> yeah, that's what like, she said. You set me up. I, I can't resist. What's up guys? Welcome back to Live Travel Asia where we show you what it's like living and traveling in Asia. Right now we're at an exclusive palace. It is actually inside the Royal Thai Navy headquarters. They only really open it once a year but this year they're letting us in for two weeks. And to get in we have to partner up with Mo here from Way Beyond Pad Thai. Way Beyond Pad Thai! Way Beyond Pad Thai! <laughs> Alright guys, so it looks like we're inside the palace area, but outside it looks really really military, there's a lot of navy officers. I feel really privileged because as you saw like outside where they have the King Toxin statue, like the guided tours and stuff, they don't actually come in. So they're just in the boats explaining what this area is, but not really coming in. But as far as being able to come here on a regular basis, you can come here on December 28th, which is King Toxin's holiday. But I'm not sure if they're gonna go ahead and do these two week intervals where they let you in for longer periods of time in the future. So if you really wanna come here, I recommend that you plan your trip so that you come here on the 28th. So we're checking out King Toxin Shrine right behind us. Um, a lot of the areas you can't even film in, but it's really informative. Unfortunately, all of it's really in Thai. But it's really great to also see that most of the people here are like the young kids coming out to learn about King Toxin. I don't know, I really like this atmosphere. Academic yeah, yeah. <laughs> Academic view. It's it's not full of tourists. We we feel like very educated right now. <laughs> Okay. Alright guys, I'm gonna have to put my camera away because no photos from this point as well. <laughs> Alright guys, I'm vlogging Mo's vlog about how you can't <laughs> <laughs> take the photos in some of the places in there but I gotta say like the most interesting places you can't take photos in there uh, I particularly found this place interesting where um, they showed everything that King Toxin was exporting to China and uh, you sort of understand like how you establish a trade relationship with China and uh, it, tell, it tells you a lot but Mayu what was the most interesting thing you learned I learned a lot of cannons here. I like to see all of this. Look at this <laughs> cannon. The girls really enjoy the cannons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They have a cannon. Yeah. Yay. Oh wow. So most telling me that that used to be the old Thai national flag. It has an elephant in the center. I think it looks really cool. Oh, well, I wonder why they changed it. Why did they change it? People can't draw it. Oh. Nowadays we can just do like four or five lines. Oh. We don't have to draw like elephants. 
Okay, <laughs> that's sort of practical, that's true. Oh. Alright guys, so we are at Icon Siam again. But we're not just here to eat food or check out Icon Siam. They actually have a toxin exhibit, so we thought it'd go really well together with this whole series. Um, this toxin uh, exhibit may be around and available for you even when you come here but uh, Mo's telling me that it's gonna only be free until like January 18th and they may either move or start charging for this exhibit after that okay so the Ingers tour isn't available a lot next one's gonna be at 2 <laughs> <laughs> All right, guess what? We have met our subscriber. We ran into him. Okay, we got a partner in crime for the toxin exhibit. <laughs> Okay, so I guess we can't be recording in there, so we'll just give you our reaction to what we experienced, but I'm looking, really looking forward to it. You can try. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> whoa. I want to be a. Uh, I need one person only. Kajak Jam. <laughs> Do that again. Pick another one. Ooh. I'm enjoying Whoa. So Mayu is always, I don't know, she's so talented at finding anything about Japan in any <laughs> mess. She found out that uh, they used to import Japanese deer leather to make armor. Samurai. Alright guys, so it was quite informative. Uh, to be completely honest with you, the first video was <laughs> sort of weird. The guy is completely dubbed because it's English, so the actor is just laughing a lot. Oh, 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 oh. But then uh, you go downstairs, the exhibit's quite informative and the video was very informative especially for a uh, newbie like me that doesn't really know too much about the Tonburi era but it's quite enlightening to know like different things that King Taksin did to trade with China and that he wasn't originally accepted by them and what kind of things he traded and how he needed like cannons and heavy weaponry to sort of fight off the enemies. It seems like it was Burma. Quite interesting. I recommend you come here, check it out. Yep. Ah. Ah, Alright, so we're at this viewpoint. Mayu is posing. King over here is uh, vlogging or something. As I'm doing Facebook Live, <laughs> my friend is vlogging, so... He is Facebook living, me vlogging, yeah. me vlogging, him Facebook yeah. living. So, for some of you. Oh, look at that. Mike pointed out there's uh, fishers. <laughs> Thanks again, guys, for checking out our video. And if this is your first time seeing us, head over to our channel, Live Travel Asia, to see the wide variety of content we offer from our standard Live in Bangkok vlogs to our in depth discussion videos about life in Thailand. You can also check out our new dedicated travel channel, Traveling Asia for International Travel Series, and our gaming channel, Live Game Asia, if you're just as much of a dork as we are or just want to chat with us on our live stream. Whatever the case, I hope you guys have an amazing week, and I'll see you guys next week for more vlogs about living and traveling in Asia. <laughs>
we're just sort of chilling and um, having some food at Aikasi. Um, Mo got us this cool, what is it, avocado? And passion fruit. Passion fruit juice. Um, I got this weird pork salad. Never had it before. What is it called? Pad mu. Um, that is yam nang mu. Oh, okay. Yeah, yam is like a spicy salad, and then nang mu is actually just pork skin. Oh, okay. So you don't got meat much. All right. (laughs) (laughs) So um, I might have to get some more protein, but whatever the case, yeah, we just wanted to, you know, catch up with you guys and introduce to you Mo. You know, comment below if you have any additional questions or better yet, check out her channel. I'll go ahead and link um, a, a link below to her channel and you can check out her video. She does videos about Bangkok right now, so um, you can get like a point of view from somebody who's grown up here but has also traveled a lot and can sort of compare and contrast um, what's out there with here as well. So it will be a definitely different perspective. Um, so where'd you say uh, you've you've uh, studied English at? Was uh, what country? She's so polite. She doesn't <laughs> want to talk because she's eating. <laughs> In Vancouver, Canada. What do you think is like the biggest difference between Canada and Thailand? Well, Thailand. Weather. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that'd be something different. <laughs> that was that was Mr. Obvious here. Yeah. Um. And um. What else? Oh, transportation. Transportation. What's wrong with transportation or right with transportation there? In Thailand, like, uh, same as people, like you see it today. <laughs> we oh. meet up, not really on time. <laughs> oh. So in Vancouver, it's like, on time, you know, when you go somewhere else, you check schedule. Mm-hmm. And it really comes like, like that. But in Thailand, you wish. Seriously. Don't you think? But they like buses. I'm gonna be a bit more o- honest. We're late because we got off late. So no, no, did no, you. I, mean, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> but I mean, <laughs> no, I'm not complaining. <laughs> not complaining. I'm talking about the transportation. Yeah, um, I don't know. Actually, yeah. like, schedule and then they run by the schedule and they will be late. You mean? Um. Yeah, in Thailand you can't do that on yeah, phone and stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. In Thailand, but in Canada they have a. Um, public transit, transit mm-hmm. have a schedule and then they work on what else different Thailand Thailand that's interesting because like here at least the buses and everything come every 10 to 15 minutes but there's no schedule but there is no schedule yeah. but I find that more suiting for me and for me to be able to get to places on time and faster than like Orange County where the buses come fastest would be 30 minutes but most routes it's like once every hour and I don't know. There's like variances of about five minutes. It's sort of reliable, I guess, if you get get there ahead of time and stuff. But yeah. I like late, people really like us. Late, yeah. We're always <laughs> running a little late and stuff. It's a bit more forgiving out here. But I could see how, yeah, things are on schedule there. Anything else? What I mean, how did you get around in Vancouver? Like buses mainly, or yeah. Okay. okay. Did you, How long did you study that? Like? One and a half years. One and a half. Mm. Yeah. What would you say is the most shocking thing about Canada from a Bangkok person's point of view? Most shocking? Mm-hmm. Oh, at that time I was still like pretty young. Mm-hmm. Just like many years ago. I was shocked because <laughs> only like the naked beach in Vancouver. Oh, like for okay. Thai people, it's shocking. They have a naked beach in Vancouver? Yeah, they do. Um, what's it called? I don't even remember. No more. It's a new, yeah, it's a nudist beach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, that would be very shocking. Yeah, for you also, yeah. as an American. It's French. In so does that mean country. you actually went to one and got all naked? I went the first time when I was like studying and not much like got there, you know, earlier. Yeah. I mean... Um, how to say? When you arrived there, yeah. When I yeah. Time? So that time, not really. I was just like looking around and being awkward. But then, like after that, I went there and then get used to it, and I don't feel anything at all. Wow. It was like yeah. <laughs> wow, you think you can do that? I mean, we. The most shocking thing to me, as far as that kind of stuff, is 
when I go to like a Korean chimjibang, like a Korean spa, like a public bath, but it's segregated between men and women. So, I don't know. I don't know how I... <laughs> what? I have no idea Canadians have nudist beaches. Because it's French in France. Oh, that's so true. Maybe they already opened those things. Maybe. I don't know. Oh, yeah. But do you know America, like uh, United States, they have sex club. You know about that? I've heard about it, but... I've been there! <laughs> we got a wild one here. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> Because it's like related, like naked and stuff. Okay. I really went there like a one in San Francisco. Yeah, that's it's actually... Cool, really. I've heard it's, Sam, it's in San Francisco. That's yeah. the place that's very liberal. Power Exchange, that was it called. <laughs> I've heard of that one, yes. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Vancouver, Vancouver. <laughs> very shocking. <laughs> so, um... Where else in like the world have you traveled? Oh, I've been to Japan, mm. Korea, United States, mm. Guatemala, mm. Mexico, <laughs> Nicaragua, Honduras, Costa Rica. What else? Malaysia, Laos. <laughs> A few more, don't remember. <gasps> oh, all the Europe, like Germany, mm. France, Austria, mm -hmm. what else? Italy? No, not those. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Wow, you've been everywhere. Mm -hmm. What's the most shocking thing that you've experienced outside of Thailand? Mm. Wow. People would think like I'm sexual related or something now, but that's well, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> is that what you're gonna say again? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, that but, like, is probably the most like shocking. craziest thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is the hardest thing like I was touching today. That pretty sexual. Um, so, um, in Guatemala, mm. I was volunteering at this hostel. Mm. So that because when I travel, I travel like on budget. I yeah. do it really slowly, like backpacking and stuff. Yeah. And I was volunteering at this hostel with a few other volunteers. So I was the only one mm. female. Oh, okay. And then up of me, like it's a bunk bed. Mm. So that also German guy, German guy, and Austria Australian guy. Mm. They're sneaking in people oh, to come, yeah. like yeah, like uh, to the room, mm -hmm. volunteer okay. room. One of them come first, German guy, yeah. not on me, that one. And then the Australian come again with another girl, so there's two, two. Mm -hmm. And you, like, you're not sleeping yet? Or even you, like, fall asleep already, you still can hear and stuff. Because it's just this close, okay. it's like, not even like two meters mm -hmm. in there, in the room. I Mom think room. this is like hostile life situation though, because I've yeah. experienced that even in yeah, Vietnam. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, even in Vietnam. Yeah, I, I saw that too, but then that is like... I don't know if... Does it not happen in Thailand? I haven't been to hostels in Thailand <laughs> obvious, for obvious reasons, because I live here. Uh -huh. But I always assume this kind of stuff happens in hostels. Yeah. Right? But, mm, but my hostel life all the time, that time, so I got used to it. But at first, first time, it was really shocking. But it happened like happened because they just live there. I live there also, and okay. then yeah. When you're setting up the story and you're like, there's three guys in the same room as me. I thought it was gonna yeah. go a completely different direction. Uh, yeah, I was the same way. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, this this is a pretty average story. <laughs> Mayu, why don't you tell us uh, the most shocking experience? <clears throat> Many shocking experiences. But I was kidnapped in Vietnam one time. Oh. You got kidnapped? Yeah. I, I wanted to go, but I, I was walking outside of the city because I like to sketch so the scenery. And then I found I was outside of the city, so I wanted to take taxi back home. And then I, I grabbed one taxi, and then he was like, um, I found he was not going back to the direction I wanted. And then, um, 
like he was saying that I I have a wedding party tonight, and he wanted me he wanted to invite me to be there like a related wedding, and then I was like, okay, if I say something, maybe I will be this is gonna be worse.、Mm-hmm. So I follow him, like one hour drive from the. I don't remember what's the name of the city. I heard it like famous place. They have pottery near Hanoi. Uh huh. Yeah, and then I saw they slaughtered those、like, goats or some some like <laughs> animal for the celebration, and they make they start、uh, cooking those food, and then I stay like four five hours, and then I was like, okay, I, it's time for me to come go back home because it's getting late, you know. And then I asked some some random guy to call me a taxi or anybody that's going back to Hanoi, and I want to go with him. I'm gonna pay for it, and then. I finally went back to Hanoi, but it was quite not shocking, but outrageous experience that I had. Yeah, that does sound pretty outrageous.、Um, hmm. Yeah. I don't know. Like, what's your? How do I top this? These sex stories.、Uh, my most shocking experience outside of America. I don't know. I just had a pretty boring life, guys. Oh, <laughs> I'm a pretty straightforward, boring guy. Yes, nothing for me. Ah, I, I can't think of anything. Sorry. <laughs> nothing appropriate. Yeah, nothing appropriate that I can say. <laughs> Because it's not. Right thing to talk in front of the camera, so I, I'm not gonna say that. <laughs> I don't even want to talk about it in front of my. <laughs> Things are better left unknown. <laughs> okay, here. All right, guys. So <laughs> I finally thought of a question to ask.、Um, having traveled everywhere and living here in Bangkok, what do you think Bangkok does right? Oh, talking me. Oh, talking to me now.、Mm. <laughs> Bangkok, that's right. Wow. Don't even know. <laughs> What? <laughs> Lots of great things about Bangkok, right? Great food. Very right, like、uh, <laughs> every corner, and that's actually some of like the best thing you probably encounter in your life. That's true. All this good food varieties, and like you can pay for like. A dollar a meal. If you eat my size, yeah, that's actually like one thing that I miss the most when I'm traveling. Yeah, I even have to like、uh, carry ramen noodle. No, <laughs> that too. But I also carry like a、uh, chili paste. Ah,、uh, okay.、Mm. <laughs> chili paste. Yeah, sometimes I I want it spicy and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sort of like how my mom would carry around kimchi everywhere.、It、needs a little bit of like a spicy fermented flavor to everything.、Mm-hmm. Yeah,、uh, but I think it's particularly difficult for like a Thai person because it's even more like refreshing because it's sour here.、Mm-hmm. The food you don't have like that spicy sour flavor anywhere else. I don't think.、So、that's、mm-hmm. tough. Hmm. As far as What about the people? What would you say is the biggest difference between your average Canadian that you ran into to a Thai person?、Mm. Wow. <laughs>、mm. Um, I think in general, Canadian really friendly. Like they talk to everyone. Maybe probably the same as like American. Yeah, yeah. Thai people we don't.、Mm. That's the truth. Because Thai people are friendly, but they don't like randomly strike up conversations with you. No, not really. Oh, but depends. Because I, I myself, I do. You do. Hmm, I do. Like this morning, I've just been talking like with the guard when、uh, when waiting for you guys for like ten minutes or something. Do. You, By the way, did you like go to an international school when you were young, or no, no, no? But because like maybe I live abroad also. I lived in Canada before. That's probably true. But even so, you don't qualify as like your average Thai person. No, 
I don't know. Like <laughs> people, people actually think I'm, I'm weird blocking, you know. Mm. And they even think I'm weird like traveling because when I travel abroad, they even ask like, "Are you Thai?" Because I've never like really seen Thai people traveling like this, like backpacker kind of way. Like a little different, a little. That's very different. true. Yeah. That's very true. I don't see too many like. They tend to do like the trips to like I would say Thai like people tend to spend weeks. actually a lot of money when they travel uh -huh. and they go to like Japan that's very popular like Korea and they do a lot of the shopping and stuff like that and the selfies but not too much of the backpacker stuff. Like what inspired you to like start doing that? Um, do you know Couchsurfing.com? Yeah, Couchsurfing. I used that oh. when I went in Canada. I oh, started okay. using that because like one of my roommates oh. um, told me about it oh. and then I started to use it in Vancouver itself like around when I go travel like short trip somewhere oh. and then I met this guy in Salt Spring Island close to Vancouver and then went to stay with him for like a night or something and he just told me like because we got along like quite well and he said he's doing like this Mexican trip oh. like going to Mexico and if I want to come together mm. and he was like giving me this idea and at that time I didn't even know like how long it's long because he said it's gonna be long <laughs> I thought it was like wow one month is pretty long and he laughed he was like no that's not long he's thinking of like six months or something like that so I actually went with him um, but not that long so it's like like a month that's still pretty long yeah but a month but then after a month things happen and then I kind of like separate like I mean separate he's go his way but I still keep traveling because I'm yeah. already in that vibe like traveling vibe yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's weird, weird story, but then it happened. And then no, I don't, that... I don't think so. That's like very similar to my experience. Yeah, yeah. And I like that. I mean, when you start traveling and you start backpacking, one thing you start learning how to do is like okay. being independent and less afraid. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. You, you know, like it's not that dangerous. Mm -hmm. So you have more confidence to like just go venture off on your own. Right? Yeah. And. You start being like very selfish, like, I don't want to stop here and be with this person if this person is like sort of dragging me down or doing things that I don't want to do. Yeah. So you, it's like, it's sort of normal to just part ways and then just like tag along with somebody else or something like that. But I was going to ask you, yeah, this is quite unique because I wanted to know, because as I backpack out here in Southeast Asia, coming from like America, like, usually backpackers have this story that we share amongst each other. Mm -hmm. Like, you, you don't have to necessarily backpack, but when you go on these long trips, and you sort of, it seems like you're completely detached from society, right? Especially Thai society. Yeah. Did you learn something about yourself, or about, like, the Thai, like, what, what like, the structured life here is that you sort of want to rebel against, or... It was just sort of like, oh, you know, it's just cool, I'm, I'm seeing stuff. Or did you have like a moment of self-discovery? Something like that? Um, <laughs> sorry. It's too in-depth. <laughs> yeah, at first when I was traveling, I, I, I was kind of like pretty against all this kind of thing, all the business and, you know, I think because hmm. along the way I met a lot of hippies that <laughs> okay. I do, like I did, I did. Mm -hmm. And um, they're pretty against all this, like, you know, city life and kind of okay, thing. Okay, and okay. then those that make the toothpaste themselves. Oh, and, shit, really? Yeah, yeah. And then those with, like, free sex and drugs and, what to say, yeah. not even, like, sunscreen. Like, that's it. If you're scared of the sun, you can just go into the shade. Like, sunscreen not needed or something like that. Like, those. Okay. Um, so I was at the same, pretty much almost like that spot, that part. <laughs> okay, so you went through that, I mean, okay. Can you, can you believe that? I live off like uh, two dollars at one point when I was in Mexico and I tried to live my life like cheapest and then... A day? Yeah. Two dollars a day, right? Yeah, okay. yeah, in Mexico and try to like live cheapest and then try to be, like, I feel like when you're there somewhere, all the environmental stuff make you to be you. 
like come back here again. You know what? Once I come back here, this is I know this is, might be something pretty weird. I don't allow people in my family to flush the toilet unless it's unless it like if it's yellow, let it mellow. If it's brown, flush it down. Have you heard? Have you heard? No, I'm that no, I've heard. I've heard of it. Yeah, so I was Why like... you would kill me. Like, <laughs> she yeah. wants me to double flush. She's like, your poo smells. Flush in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> um, wow. Yeah, so I, I was at that point. But yeah. then when, when, when I came back here, uh -huh. all the environment and stuff changed again. And I even thought like... How did I do that? <laughs> yeah, I can't imagine myself doing that again anymore. I can't even do like backpack, like use the backpack, heavy backpack for like, I don't know, I can't carry it no more, it's heavy. <laughs> and I turned out to be like pretty spoiled. Yeah. Oh, what's I, the question though? Because. No, 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 no. no. I, okay, let me, let me expand further because your experience sort of goes along with my experience, but you just went to the extreme. Yeah, super extreme. You have mm. to see like, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know how you did it, but I mean, <laughs> with me, okay, so I did this when I was a lot older. I Like my first backpacking trip was when I'm like, when was, how old was I? 33, right? 33, 32. So. Oh, how old are you? I'm 35. Oh. Yeah. So Looks how old are you? Same age, no? 20, not even 8 yet. Oh, okay. Seven. Okay, she's a young one. <laughs> Mayu is a year younger than me. Two years younger than me. Mm. Yeah. So... You look young. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you're sort of older, then you sort of know what you like. You sort of know what you want. I'm, I'm less, like, influenced by... I don't know. I, I just... I tried doing the hostel thing once and it, it just wasn't for me what do you mean the hostel ones like to stay in the hostel yeah I, I did it in Vietnam but to me it just didn't make sense I was just like I'm just gonna spend the extra five dollars more to get myself a room by myself and I don't have to worry about like my luggage like people stealing my equipment or something like that and I don't know it, it's just it was just weird, like, I couldn't bring, like, a girl and then <laughs> sleep with other... Like, that just, <laughs> that just seems a bit too <laughs> free, <laughs> like... Um, so, yeah, I, but to me, that was... It was pretty extreme because I would stay at these guest houses that were relatively run down, in my opinion, for 9 to $10. Dollars. But, I mean, it's because I, I, I was... Like, to me, that's extreme because... I was in the banking life, and I would stay in five-star hotels and stuff. Banking life. Because that's... He, he was a banker. That's just... He worked for banking. Oh, oh! Yeah, yeah. Banking life. <laughs> you know, the, the corporate life. So, I would have, like, all these all-expense-pay trips and conferences at only five-star hotels and stuff. So, like, going to these rundown hotels where the bathroom smells and stuff like that, to me, I was like, woo, like, being exciting, right? I mean, okay, I did, I did, I, I went a bit more extreme than that, but uh, <laughs> as far as lodging is concerned, I wasn't, I didn't see the value of saving five extra bucks. I don't know, that's, I just enjoy the creature comfort. But even after, like, doing these trips where I was living on, it wasn't $2 budget, a $20 budget a day, <laughs> um, I came back and... I just sort of appreciated like life in Bangkok, like the modern conveniences and stuff like that. But long story short, that experience has allowed me to like see the world in a different way. Mm -hmm. I, I try to like always remember myself even before that backpacking trip. Because sometimes you sort of forget. You just remember how you were maybe a year ago and stuff. But like I can't even recognize myself if I think about myself from that person's point of view. And some of the things that like, I think about is, yeah, I, I don't need as much material. I mean, I still like 
there's still stuff that I do now. And it's hard because you get back into it, like this whole like business, commercial thing, but um, I, I, I know that I need less of it. And I know like I can travel freely, like I don't have to be afraid of people mugging me and stuff like that. It's relatively safe out there and that there's like nice and kind people pretty much everywhere. Um, yeah, that's, that's like the kinds of stuff I sort of get. Mm. Uh, there's more. I don't want to like go into more in-depth stuff, but uh -huh. is there like anything that's like lingering from those trips that has changed you? Like, or did you like completely say I, I was like out of my mind <laughs> and just go completely like um, into Bangkok city mode? Um, <laughs> no, I think like uh, that know how to live and you know, not know how to live, but, wow. I mean, I think it's pretty interesting that when I heard, like, you just full-time YouTube, that's something that's very... Oh, I'm not full-time YouTube, full-time, pretty much like full-time steam in. Yeah, okay. Um, steam and YouTube, but it's like social media. It's not like, you're not going after the corporate life. No, no, yeah. Yeah, so that's quite unique. Mm -hmm. You think that had anything to do with it? Like, let me think. Yeah, maybe. What got you into it? What got you into like started with theming and YouTube? Um, at first I was just wanting something for myself, like uh, my own thing, you know, mm -hmm. not working for someone and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I started my own website, waybeyondpadthai.com. And then um, I was gonna do all like all Thai food and stuff because I feel like I know it already, so it's gonna be easy for me to explain yeah. and maybe just nap and then tell people. Mm. And um, my boyfriend just got me into this theme thing. Mm. He said like I could do like this, pretty much the same thing, but then instead of doing my own website, mm. I have this same content go to steam it and then earn some crypto mm. and then after that once you like if you know steam or steamit.com mm. once you get on it you go crazy about it <laughs> seriously because you literally can earn money on steam and there's like so many um, comedy on there that you can get involved and stuff and then you have like another social like circle of friends okay. and um, it's fun mm. So that kind of being my main thing instead of my own website. Mm. So I focus on here and then some of the content that I put on here go on my website. Make sense. Yeah, but I'm curious like how you even got to that point because <clears throat> I mean it, it seems like you have a pretty good education, your English is good. I'm sure you could get a really decent job out here if you wanted to. Why didn't you? And then Um I huh could totally work on like some like I, I would like to be a flight attendant if I could but I couldn't really get it when I wanted to but to work in like company is not ideal for me I can't just go like 9 to 5 and stuff like not at all I actually like apply at Siam Paragon oh yeah I got a job and like pretty much like like this what do you call it customer thingy oh the information yeah, pretty much. Yeah. I went one day uh -huh. and I had to quit because... That is not what you wanted to Yeah, do. I felt forced. I don't feel like it's myself. So I guess this was your uh, hippie influence. Yeah. yeah, probably. I'm not so sure. Yeah. Yeah, you're like super independent. Most people would just do it, you know? And then try to like... Like, pretty much go along with what society tells you, which is... You know, work hard. No, but that's make also, a lot of money. There's also like some facts. We can be on here. I can't tell you like off the camera. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 Uh. <laughs> All right. All right. Um, something more lighthearted for all my male audiences. Do you still have a boyfriend? Are you available? Yeah, yeah. It's coming in a few weeks. Sorry guys. <laughs> but um oh he he doesn't live here though? No, he's American. Oh he's American. Where'd you meet him? Like traveling around or just out yeah. here? 
Oh yeah? yeah. Out, out there. Mm-hmm. So, would you say, like, when you're traveling in these areas, it's a good place for, like, guys to meet girls? Yeah, I think so. I, I mean, because that's something I wanted to say as well, because when you're going through, like, the backpacking trip, and you're, like, sort of in the rough, and you have these adventures, and, and there's, like, instances where you have, like, hardships, too, like, relative hardships, like, you get stranded out in the middle of somewhere, like, you create this bond, you know? And I don't know, like, I, I just think it's a great place to, like, meet someone. That's how me and Mayu sort of got close, too. Oh. Yeah. Like, I mean, in the beginning, we just met on mm-hmm. Tinder. But, like, when I sort of felt like, oh, I can sort of, like, be real with her and, like, count on her and everything. It was, like, when we went on a trip to Sri Lanka, you know? Uh-huh. Yeah. But, um, seems like you went backpacking in a lot of places. Where do you think is like the best place to go? I love Guatemala. Guatemala? A lot, yeah. It's like still full of culture and nature and stuff. They yeah. still have like that Mayan Mayan tribe. Yeah. Living and then, you know, different type of clothes, like really colorful. I don't know how to explain, hmm. but you'll put it somewhere around here, right? Alright. Where do you think is like <laughs> the highest ratio of Female travelers to male travelers. One more time. <laughs> Where's the highest ratio of girls to guys? Where? Which country? Travel. Which country? I don't get the question. <laughs> huh. Okay, so. so the concept that we have is that when you're backpacking, a lot of guys think it's just going to be a bunch of other guys. Oh. There aren't going to be many girls because girls are too afraid to like travel alone. No, I don't think so. But I found like there's a lot of girls yeah. traveling, especially in Southeast Asia. Yeah. But I mean, you've been sort of. I haven't gone backpacking in South America and stuff, so I can't compare. But like, how is it like the ratio of guys to girls traveling? Oh, so that's the question. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I think it's like pretty much same same. Same same everywhere. It doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you find like there's usually more guys than girls though, or? Or they're traveling individually, or they're traveling in their group. Like it feels maybe girls safer, feel safer if you travel with a guy. It's all mixture, and I think pretty much it's like solo and maybe like uh, together. Together couple, yeah. Yeah. I've noticed that like when I go around like the guest house scene, there's a guest house scene and then a boutique hotel scene, and then a. Uh, Hostel scene. Hostel and guest house sort of mixed together, I guess. Because there's usually like bunk beds inside guest houses. Yeah. But I noticed there's a lot of girls and guys sort of meet while they're traveling and they're coupled up. Um, but I, I think there's more guys in general because the girl group travelers, at least in Asia, they seem to, <laughs> they seem to go to like the boutique hotels. Yeah. Unless, except for Western girls. Western girls. Western like girls like guest houses and hostels. But like the Korean girls and the Chinese girls, they're always like in groups of three. It's not even two. It's like three. And they're in boutique hotels and stuff. In it's, Central America, yeah. not much of Asian. There's, oh, yeah. There aren't that many no. Asians at all. No. Uh, was it like five, six years ago? Um, 2015, actually. Three years ago. Yeah. Not Ooh, even. That's three years. Not even like Japanese girls. Because Japanese girls, and like, they tend to be like everywhere. No, not that I. Have you ran across any Asian girl while you're in South America? Yeah. One Taiwanese. Two Taiwanese, actually. Okay. Two Taiwanese. Okay. All right. That's uh, <laughs> that's interesting. I never knew that. Yeah. That's true because it's far away for like Chinese from, or Koreans to travel. Yeah. yeah. And I don't know any like of my Asian American friends, a lot of girls that would backpack down the top now. Yeah. Actually, yeah, no. No, Asian, yeah, now that I think about it. Are there even a lot of, like, like, Western, like, like, Caucasian girls from big cities from America, or are they, like, European? 
Um, yeah, a lot of European American too, but not as many. Not as many Americans, right? Yeah. That's quite unique. Mm. All right. Thanks for showing us the backpack. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. Um, all right. So I think we talked quite a bit. Yeah, it's been so like an hour. We'll wrap it up here. <laughs> um, yeah, go ahead and comment below if you have any more questions. If I get a lot of questions, more stuff that you want to know about Mo, then uh, we might meet up again and do another <laughs> one of these vlogs. But whatever the case, you know, be sure to check out our channel. Um, you can definitely ask. I mean, would you like a lot of comments on your channel? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she would really, really like. We're just talking about it. So ask away, comment away yeah. on her channel, and. Um, Definitely support her, um, and uh, yeah, whatever the case, I hope you guys have an amazing week, and see you next week for more vlogs. That's what I say, babe. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'll be my today. Please subscribe, <laughs> thumbs up, <laughs> and comment below. Yeah. <laughs> bye, -bye guys. Bye.